Well, welcome to a new Harry's Garage video, and I'm really excited about this one because I'm going to be looking at the Audi Sport Quattro and also what Quattro meant for Audi and when it arrived and the whole history of Quattro. But to have a genuine Sport Quattro in the garage, I'm really excited about that. Just over 200 cars were produced in 1984-85 and this was the Rally Special. This was the Group B ultimate version of the Quattro. But I haven't just got one Quattro in the garage today. I've got two because I've got an original 10 valve Quattro. Big favourite of mine. And in nine, this car arrived on the scene at, at the Geneva show in 1980. And it just revolutionised motorsport rallying everything we thought about four wheel drive. Now, in 1980, four-wheel drive was sort of reserved for off-roading. You have the Range Rover, typically in America, you have the Jeep and the, that sort of car. And they were sort of off-road cars made to go on-road. And that was the sort of use. And yes, I know there was a Jensen FF um, late 60s, but that was a sort of cul-de-sac. No one really experimented until Audi looked at it. And the Quattro originally was within Audi was going to be a rally special. Um, Four-wheel drive was passed as allowable for world rallying in 1979. The general consensus amongst the manufacturers at the time, it wasn't worth the complication and Lancia was sort of dominating. They had the Stratos, they were de developing the O37. Um, there was even I mean, uh, Lotus Sunbeam was up there, Opal Manta, and of course the Escorts, the 1800 Escorts. So that was a sort of the rally scene, and everybody just thought four-wheel drive, oh, it look, looked at Range Rover and Jensen FF, it was heavy, no, that's not going to be quicker. But the engineers at Audi thought differently. Ferdinand Piech was involved, uh, uh, utter genius as he then went on as engineer, new Porsche, and he thought, no, four-wheel drive will work. They, they saw a sort of um, little VW off-road car operating in the snow and thought, hang on, look at that performing snow. How, what about a rally car? Could we build it light enough? And uh, they surprised the world with the Quattro at Geneva. A jaw-dropping moment for all journalists. I did a story. I actually took a Quattro 10 valve out to Geneva for the 25th anniversary. It's, it's 40 years now. So um, some time ago, loved every minute of it. But when the Quattro then went rallying, it, it, originally it was going to be a homologation special. It's going to build like 500 a year, but demand sort of outstripped. But I've got, I stumbled across an article of its first rally in one of my old magazines. So this is an autocar dated January 1981. Uh, first at time out win in Gianna Rally, enter the Quattro. It didn't just win, it, it just destroyed everything there. The winning margin was over 20 minutes over the 236 competitive miles. It won every single one of the 31 stages the Quattro had arrived and basically all the other manufacturers had a bit of an oh shit moment. We need to do four-wheel four drive. So that's how important Quattro was. But as a road car, it revolutioned that as well. Now I'm going to try and do two videos. So I'm not going to go too much detail on the 10 valve. This video, I'm going to concentrate on the ultimate Quattro, the Sport Quattro. Now that was Group B. That's when, that was 1982, they started working on this car. And this car was shown first at uh, Frankfurt in September, 1983. This is nearly half a million pounds worth of Audi Quattro now, but it was expensive in its day as well. Um, the, the Quattro launched about 14 and a half thousand, 10 valve. This arrived, it was priced on application, but after a bit of digging, I've discovered it was about 205,000 German marks, which was about 88,000 sterling in 1984-85. For reference, a Kuntash, 54,000. So you had to pay an extra 30,000 pounds to have your Audi Quattro Sport. Anyway, let's go and have a closer look.
Now, the most obvious visual change with the Sport Quattro is the engineers wanted it to have a shorter wheelbase than the 10 valve uh, standard Quattro. And they chopped a remarkable 320 mil out of it, or 12 and a half inches from its wheelbase. And you get this sort of truncated sh look. Richard Mead and at Evo, when we were at Evo early days, we did a story on this car. He took it down to Nice and it was it was the story was christened get shorty and that's what i always think i always think of this car as shorty as this sort of nickname but what a statement it is i mean there's no mistake in this car for the uh, sport quattro and especially at the front if you look at those vents and the extra vents in the bonnet and the whole car is sort of constructed from unique panels we'll go around the panels in a moment but my goodness it looks purposeful the other striking thing about the Sport Quattro is how high it sits, because it's obviously a rally special, so it's not tied down as you sort of expect these sort of um, special editions. This was a very personal machine. Today, it looks odd on its sort of 15 inch wheels. They, they were standard fare, so the 10 valve was on t um, 15 inch wheels as well, but the uh, width went up with the uh, Sport Quattro and it runs 225 50 by 15 tyres rather than 205 on the standard Quattro. It's wider tracked, dramatically wider tracked, and fully adjustable suspension on this car. Okay, there's open the boot, there's a little lever in the door, and then the bonnet is here. And that pops up. Now, just before we open this, this is f obviously feeding air into the engine. And then there are these scoops here, and these do a different job. That's feeding ventilation, but the engine actually breathes from these, which you'll see when I open the bonnet properly. Now, lift it up. First thing is the bonnet. It's not made of metal. I'm not exactly sure what it's made of, but it's super light. And this sort of looks like cable, but this is actually metal, all this. Um, sort of grid. I've no idea why it's there, but it, whether this engine grenades or something, it needs to protect. But those vents I showed you on the bonnet, there is actually the rubber bellows that then fit into the air intake, which is here, um, air cleaner, and this comes around here to the monster turbo on this car, way bigger than sitting on the 10 valve fridge. This is the um, blow valve. Uh, and it's that that provides so much boost to the new engine, which now has four valves, so a 20 valves, first time we've seen 20 valves on a Quattro, aluminium blocked. So rather than the 200 horsepower, we're now at 306 horsepower, 258 um, pound foot or something like that. The other thing that's changed is there's a monster intercooler on the front here, where you expect to find a radiator. No, it's a giant hole intake there is intercooler. The rad, as on the uh, 10 valve, is to the side here, but much bigger radiator, a funny sort of Kevlar feel as well to, to keep this monster engine cool. The other thing I notice in here are all the suspension struts and strengthening. So you obviously got the bar between the struts here, but you've also got this bar as well to try and strengthen up the suspension. Um, so very different. Other things to say, this panels, these are sort of Kevlar or fiberglass. It was Bauer, this badge here, these um, German guys actually made all the body panels on this. Um, in fact, if I go all the way around, we'll go around to the side and just show you some other special bits on this car. Because everything is bespoke on it. The competition department, this is basically an Audi 80, is what the Quattro is based on. But the competition department said, oh, do you mind just changing the rake on the screen? Because we get a bit of reflection on it. So this is actually steeper than on a regular 80. Uh, roof, that's a fiberglass or Kevlar. Doors are uh, metal. And again, these giant wings at the back are Kevlar as well. This is all unique as well. Um, different rake on the rear screen. I love the Quattro script in there as well. And in the boot, there we go, you get a full size spare, a bit of a boot, um, there's tank in there, etc. So it's pretty well trimmed for a competition car, but then again, so it should be at the price point. One last thing I want to show you is the joke rear seats. Obviously, with a shortened wheelbase, well, there's not much in the seating department. You can see how close um, the Recaro, wonderful Recaro seats are, and then this space to the rear seats. 
and you think, oh, I can still use them. No, you can't. You do that, there's the floor, as you can see there. It has no sort of place to put your legs. Oh, I'll move the seat forward, it'll get better. No, it doesn't. I think there's an ECU or something hides under there. So the, the, um, the rear seats are basically just for decoration purposes only. Anyway, what this car is all about is the driving. So let's take it outside now. Well, you, as you climb in, you're sort of met with a very sort of 80s feel. If you've had a, a Golf GTI from the same period, you're, it's all very familiar. It's very close to Quattro. Uh, even the key's in the same position. The wheel looks near identical to me. But, God, it's so special. I mean, the Recaro seats, they just look the part as well, don't they? Um, they are so of the period and they were quality, they feel good. I love the Alcantara, it's unusual in this period um, to have the middle of the seats with that. And it's strange, they've tried to add value, I suppose, at the price point by putting leather everywhere, but they've done an excellent job of making it look, I'm not sure if it's plastic or leather, but I can see it's all stitched everywhere. It must be a nightmare to do, um, to dress up the cabin beyond the, your regular quattro. Right, start the engine up. A little bit of a churn, as you expect. And uh, yeah, it settles down. Now, I, you didn't get this on Quattro, you got these three instruments. I've got oil temperature, engine temperature, and then pressure. In a, in a regular Quattro, you've got a fuel gauge and you've got a boost gauge, and everything else was down to warning lights. Not on this car, you get proper instruments. Coming down, you've got heated rear window, bizarrely heated seats but I suppose it does a lot of rally stuff and then ABS switch as well because in this period um, ABS was for um, on it was sort of a, a new system um, new to cars and it was recognized that you actually be quicker on a rally without ABS on on slippery going so you used to flick that off if you were getting serious and also diff locks um, have a, have a, um, a diff locks because this had a mechanical diff at the t time it had a um, torsion diff came later on the 20 valve on this car but I can lock those by pulling those out um, it's pneumatic right the rear diff is now locked so I can take that I can hear it hissing there's an air pump that powers it all it's fantastic right in first let's get going first thing you notice is very mechanical feel and the low first gear I'm into second sort of a bit reluctant going into second sort of long throw gearbox as well um, lots of movement on the gearbox actually this what I found with this car um, it needs a fair bit of warming up so I'm gonna head out and I think you'll probably rejoin us somewhere near Burford First thing you notice is you get underway. Well, one, the glass, amount of glass in this car and the visibility is off the scale. It's Range Rover like. And it, it was just something from the period. And each time you get into an 80s car, you know, I've just reminded just the depth of glass you've got in this era of cars. And plus the more upright screen that the Rally Boys demanded from Audi. Um, that helps as well. So there's a slight bit of normality for something so crazy as this. The other thing, the gearbox, it definitely needs heat. I haven't been able to discover if it's a different gearbox from a regular Quattro. I'm 99% certain it is because it has a different feel completely to the 10 valve. It's notchier and um, it's sometimes reluctant at cold to take a gear cleanly so you have to it's a gearbox not to be rushed particularly when cold just like Kuntash and the Testarossa and other cars of that period um, and also it's not a dog leg clutch it's a sorry dog leg gearbox it's just a regular uh, pattern five speed again VW source um, Storks indicators that familiar sound from Golf GTI. Wind up windows as well. No electric windows in your sport quattro, but they were standard on the on the quattro. And you'll hear general bumps and thumps 
that sort of goes with homologation specials like this when you're building 200 cars and you're, you're building it so you can go rallying the finer bit of refinement doesn't really matter during the dura sort of durability trials etc what you're trying to create is a racing machine and oh, you've got a bit of a nuisance you've got to build 200 of them so we can uh, qualify as a production car so there's definite character as soon as you pull away it does not feel like your regular 10 valve quattro of the period this car arrived a few days ago and well, it's just sort of usable and I actually had to go into London and, uh, and, I, and I was going to take um, the P8 and I thought how many days do you have a Sport Quattro sitting outside the house? I'm going to take the Sport Quattro and went into London in this car. <sighs> it was heaven because it, it's a square box, easy to place, quite small. Um, I was also very surprised at how many people spotted it as not your regular quattro there was thumbs up there was all sorts of cyclists pulling up alongside funny enough the heater is a um, bit over enthusiastic you, you it's very good on hot but when you try and put it to cold well it's still sort of tepid so you have the window open a bit um, no air conditioning on this car either uh, the looks like radio delete I thought they had a radio you've got a um, thing here balancing for front and rear but um, not operational on this the other thing when you move the gear lever around like this you see the center console is all a bit loose no, it's not exactly tied down but what a thing this is what a thing also I find to find first gear it's quite useful you just try and find second or third and then you can find first if you're sitting in neutral and trying to get first it's not that keen and there's a slight whine as well from the gearbox yeah we're in something pretty special here can't get over how short the gearing is I, you know I'm in third I'm doing 50 clicks and I'm doing 2,000 RPM. So 15 miles per hour per 1,000 RPM in third. I've only got two more gears to go. That's sort of part why the performance is so good as well. Short gearing, lightweight. I weighed this car and I was surprised. They quote 1297, I think it is. I got it at 1261 kilos. Right, let's have a little look. Here we go. And off we go. Oh. There's quite a push there. I love how the boost gauge it goes up to three bar. Three bar of the boost gauge. And that big turbo starts pumping. It gets a proper move on. I dug out Autocar, tested this very car in 1986, August 86, and it was 4.8, I think, to 60, and 12.6 to 100 miles an hour. Now, in, in 85, 86, that was really motoring. When this car went on sale, look at the early reports, it was the most powerful car on sale. It beat the Porsche Turbo, the 911 Turbo. And um, it was a real weapon, and that's what it feels. It still feels quick in 2020. And as I say, you can cruise along at the moment. I'm just doing 60, 62 miles an hour, 3,000 RPM in fifth. Just it just is a mild muncher as well as this rally weapon as well. And we go not just sort of here it's not as loud in here as you might imagine it's pretty refined but once it winds up and off we go oh, fast and the other great thing this is a bumpy bit of road doesn't matter dismisses it it's got so much suspension travel and it's softer suspension than you get today just eat bumps don't exist fire power up bit of a yump there it just is unreal i did look underneath and it's actually got all new suspension components so it's a very well prepped car this i can't tell you how bumpy this road is but it's just dismissing it right let's see how it gets on through here first of all as i come through here is a bit of a compression 
process of compression, what's it do? No, it doesn't exist. Into third, power up that, wait for that turbo to boost, and we go, my goodness, I can carry some speed through here. My God. tell you uh, what we were doing through there but my god it just ate it what I love about this car is it is it moves on the suspension doesn't bottom out and yet has all this grip there's some yumps here proper rally territory I don't think there's that many cars today that are as quick down here as this is what's lovely is you can read it get air here yeah just my god so confidence inspiring oh dear slow things down again and you're just not using the revs you can use that torque that mid-range punch and that massive turbo pumping right see what it's like on these tighter corners here second I don't know so low second I'm at three and a half thousand around there it's funny it leans into the corner it didn't understeer there where you expect it to understeer god you could just feel it pivoting squashing down on the back corner as you accelerate out absolutely I mean completely different drive sensation from today's cars that are stiffer lower low profile rubber this really moves about on all four corners and yet doesn't let go and it just makes it dead easy to read you've got this wonderful steering i know what's loaded up no point was it scrubbing out of the front i could feel it pitch i could add power and all it did was just fire out the corner mighty impressive other surprising things with it brakes are really good uh, on the 10 valve quattro it's quite a mushy feel on the pedal it's not confidence inspiring this feels much better on the pedal even though it's not that much bigger brakes there's nothing fancy about the brakes but it just feels better sorted I suppose you could say it's not the prettiest of cars, but who flipping cares when you've got that ride and handling that this thing can deliver? The looks are secondary. I personally really like it because it's sort of purposeful. You think the Integral, Lancia Integrale looks pumped up, or well, wait till you see a Sport Quattro. The thing, you never see them. Uh, this was the original sort of press car. Audi brought it back. They hoped to sell five in the UK. They eventually have sold, according to my figures, 20 in the UK. Um, but it's a super rare car. Of the 214 made, about 40 were competition cars. There's only 160 something road cars. Crazy rare. So, how do you summarise this car? My goodness. I suppose if I'm looking for sort of negatives towards it, the gearbox is not its finest feature. Um, it's, it's reluctant to go into gear, it's long throw, it's vague and that sort of thing. But well, once in gear it locks on and it flies and you've got so many other things to concern yourself, you forget about it very quickly. Then there's obviously bangs and rattles and the drive chain, train shunts etc. Um, that mark it out as a sort of homologation special. That's all I can think of on the negatives. The positives, performance with a capital P. My God, it feels quick and it is quick, but it's the way it translates and the pleasure it gives because of the way it delivers its performance. That huge turbo, once that's pumping, it's a conversation stopper, your eyes are out of stores, whoa. So um, yeah, I love that about it. And then you've got the handling on top, you've got that lightweight, you've got the four-wheel drive and you've just got this incredibly confidence-inspiring handling that you just want to chuck it at corners, let it sort it out. 
but you read everything you know it's got um, this ability but it still makes you feel heroic and it's a wonderful feeling <sighs> and there aren't many cars I would sort of deem label iconic but this this is such a rare car it was built by some incredible engineers Ferdinand Pierre didn't mess around and you only got to look at its rally record. When this appeared, it just changed the rally landscape. It was dominant, 83, 84, Michel Mouton doing Pikes Peak, driver championship, world rally championships. The opposition had to catch up. I mean, they did, they brought out the more nimble uh, Lancia, but from an owner's point of view, and a homologation special and something to own, this is right up there. What I love about it, it doesn't feel fragile. It's made by Audi. It feels wonderful. And you know, how old is this car now? It's in the 35 years old. It feels super strong. And if I have to give it a score, it's one of those cars that if I had the ultimate five car garage, this is one of those cars. <laughs> To own this, I think it's the best homologation rally special going. A very special road car. And you're going to open that garage and see this straight, <laughs> slightly strange looking car and go, my God, I'm a lucky boy. So there you go. That's the Audi Sport Quattro. An utter privilege to drive for the last week. I adored living with it. I adored taking it into London uh, earlier in the week. I just love it, punting up and down this road. I'm going to do more miles in it before it goes back in a few days' time. But an utter hero car of mine. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, well, keep watching, keep subscribing. There's going to be more videos coming along very soon.